third question that we have that we want to cover is what is a beacon's range? So we've got um, different ways that we can configure the beacon. Is that right? Yep. So when you think of, actually I'll use an example, when you think of NFC, you know that NFC, you actually have, you have to put your device within inches of the uh, POS terminal or the NFC terminal in order for some kind of communication or transaction to take place. With beacons, it actually gives you a lot more flexibility when it comes to its range. So there are actually three different specifications that a beacon's range has. First one being far, which is approximately 10 meters away from the beacon. The next one is near, which is between a couple of meters from, uh, from the user's location and the beacon. And finally, immediate, which is as close as a few centimeters. Now these three different specifications allow users to receive different messages based on their location to that beacon. So for example, if I'm standing at a far distance from the beacon, I could receive a certain message. If somebody else is nearer to that one beacon, they might receive an entirely different message, and somebody who is standing right next to the beacon within a few centimeters or inches could receive a completely different message on their own. So the fact that you can have one beacon and it can be programmed to send three different kinds of messages to users based on their location is actually very powerful. Now, because, that, because beacons can actually run on radio signals, it can affect the maximum range of your beacon. Different obstructions, depending on the location of where your beacon is set up, depending on where the location of the user is, different obstructions could get into the way of how you actually calculate the maximum range of a beacon. But, and you can't actually pinpoint a pack, the fact that a person is exactly 15 meters away or that they're four meters away. It's always just an approximation based on their range. So the actual maximum distance of a beacon's range will actually will entirely depend on the environment they're in and the location and any other obstructions. Right. One of the things that leading on to that, we get a lot of questions around this beacon's range, and it's very similar to asking the question asking a question, well, what's the range of my wireless router in my house? And it will depend on a lot of factors. It does depend on where that route is placed. It does depend on where you place the beacon. It depends on the device that's receiving that, uh, that beacon transmission. Do you have a big case on it? Are you putting it, is it in your bag? Have you got a really thick leather suitcase that you're carrying your, your phone in? All of those things will impact the range at which you, the user, the end user, will receive that message that's being emitted from the beacon. Yeah. And, and, and the other thing here is, is, is to note that the beacon is always broadcasting at a, at a fixed power. Um, if you're lucky, you may be able to hear it from 70 meters away, um, but um, in a, a normal indoor environment, around 30 to 40 meters is, uh, uh, is, is a reasonable range to, it, to assume from a, from a smaller battery-powered beacon. Uh, if it's mains-powered um, or USB, it could be slightly, it could be slightly more. Um, but then it's up to you what you do with that proximity. So when somebody, when 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 your uh, the the frameworks that, that Apple have provided will tell you whether you are far away from a beacon. Yeah. So there's four states. I either can't hear the beacon at all. I'm far away from the beacon, which means I can hear it, but I'm not close to it. I'm near to the beacon or I'm in immediate proximity of the, um, of the beacon. And it's not just messages that, that, um, that, that can be delivered or, or things at these, these different ranges. You might want to do something when the user enters the store, you know, perhaps alert a cashier, perhaps um, um, alert somebody that, that, that somebody has arrived. You might want to do something when they are, when they are closer, like push a message to the lock screen to, to do some action. And when they're immediate, um, then there's the possibility to uh, to trigger things such as authorization or payment um, or, or transfer of data um, from from your app to a terminal or um, or, or whatever. So a, again, huge amounts of, of, of flexibility, all from um, a, a very simple low cost low cost device. Actually, Nick, why don't you just remind me? One of our clients um, and their customers, they they're a mall operator, shop a big shopping mall operator. Their clients are ecstatic by this, particularly the VIP clients, because the way they've gone about implementing um, uh, using Passcat and using beacons, as a VIP, a very important person, comes into the store, which is using the far um, message, they know they're far away, 
they can then start to move to that VIP and offer them those additional services. So it doesn't always have to be a digital experience off the back of knowing someone has walked into that zone. So it, you, it, in terms of where it fits beautifully with our mission to optimize that offline to online to offline to online experience, that, that's the opportunity that beacons plus other capabilities that are built into the smartphones these days yeah, that, that's where you've got the opportunity to tap into improving that service, not just via the phone, but also via your current proposition around service excellence.